Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know there's lots of things that can go wrong in woodworking, but there's things that we can do to fix those. And today, that's what I'm going to cover off. So let's get started. Here I am over at my workshop cupboard and one of the things that happens from time to time with doors and drawers is that the gap may be too wide and rather than making a new drawer or a new door there's something we can use called a bullnose strip that we can use to fill in there and we can make those a variety of sizes. Let me show you what it looks like. And there's what a bullnose strip looks like. Just a very thin piece of wood and just rounded over. We use a quarter round on the router table and make them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And there's that bullnose strip that I just made. And typically you would put that on the door, not on the carcass of the cupboard. So if you have a door or a drawer, and there's a quick fix. And you can see what that looks like. You just leave it a little bit proud of the door. And it actually turns out to be an enhancement. So not only does it fix a mistake uh, or some repair that needs to be done, but it also does an enhancement to that. Some people will actually make doors or drawers a little bit smaller so they can surround the entire drawer with a bullnose strip. And it's just a nice detail. Here's the little demonstration table I made a few videos ago. Let's talk about leg fixes for a moment. Often you'll get a table or a chair that will have a wobble. And I've put a piece of thin plywood under here to make this wobble because I want to show you how I'm going to fix this. Now if you have a table or chair with a small amount of wobble, what you can typically do is use this cloth backed sandpaper and just draw it underneath on the leg that's long and that will fix up that wobble. But if it's a lot of wobble like it is in this table, then you're going to need to add wood. That's the easiest thing and there's nothing wrong with adding wood. Here's a little feature that you'll find on the bottoms of most legs or you should find and you can make that if it doesn't have it. You'll notice there's a little bit of a gap underneath there. This is called a chamfer and what this does at the bottom of the legs, the reason they put this on here is that if the table is pushed around on a floor, what happens if you don't have the chamfer is it will fray the bottoms of the legs of the table. So that's why we put that on there uh, and it looks good too. But if you're adding a piece of wood to it, you want that little piece of wood to be the same size as the chamfer or even smaller and you can see that that one is a little bit smaller but you can also see that little piece of wood that I just put in there you could spot that from across the room because it's light now here's the way to fix that if you do have to add wood all you need to do is take and add some little some black to it and I like to put a little bit on the top as well so that it disguises it and watch what that looks like now when I put that little piece of wood underneath there see how that disappears you'd never even notice that that was there and now I've got a good steady table that was easy to fix simply glued a little thin piece of wood underneath it and it's fixed as easy as that the other thing that happens quite frequently, people cut off legs of tables and desks and sometimes chairs and then they discover that they're too short. So they'll, they'll ask you, woodworkers are often asked, how do we make legs longer? Well, you can't make legs longer. You need to add an extension to them. And this is just one option. It depends how much you need to put on here. This particular one is about four inches long. And what we do with these, and I just cut this at an angle, I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly and easily. Typically what we do is drill a couple of holes in the main part of the leg so that we can put a, at least a couple of dowels in and the way we find where those dowels fit is we use something called dowel finders and the way they work they go into the hole of where the dowels going to sit in and when you put some pressure with another piece of wood on top of that you can see 
that it leaves this little indentation and what that's for is it it will now help you align the dowel to that hole so you'll drill a hole for that dowel in there put the next dowel in and then you can find the second hole quite easily so it's a great little system uh, and it works well and dowels will hold that leg in most cases that will hold that leg very rigidly now the other thing just to bear in mind is you will never I shouldn't say you'll never it'll be very difficult in many cases to try and match the color of that wood so what we do in a situation like this and I've just put some black felt pan on there but we don't even try and disguise it try and make the leg look different altogether so it looks like something has been done on purpose which of course it has um, but don't try and match it uh, the best thing is to do, use a different color altogether and that will give you the best fix that you can get and here's a quick way of making these you can cut these out by hand you can cut them out on a bandsaw uh, let me show you how to make those very quickly and here's a quick way to draw out the pattern for a leg extension. Uh, and I just measured the length of this, marked it at four inches, and I've just marked that on all sides ahead of time. The next thing to do is take some, I'm just using a measuring bar, a piece of wood would work fine, and just draw some arbitrary lines like that, quick and simple. And of course, the top of this leg is the same match as the table that you're replacing. Mark that like that all the way around, and now you can just very quickly add a little mark on the top of those. And now you can take that and mark a, a line all the way up to the top if you want if you want to have sort of part of it square you could go to a little bit shorter line like that uh, and then you'll get a little bit of a square uh, end of it here or you can have it all the way along and you do that on all four sides cut that off you can cut that off by hand it's pretty simple you could use it on a bandsaw uh, and that way you can in no time at all with a little bit of sanding a little bit of edge treatment there to take some of the sharpness off that you'll be able to make four legs in no time while we're on the topic of leg extensions you don't have to make great big thick leg extensions there are companies around who make little wooden project blocks, something like this. They make them round, square, different thicknesses. Uh, you can make this yourself. All this is a little square piece of wood with a, a quarter round that on my router. I just cut that off. Takes a couple of minutes and something like that could be used as an extension as well. Uh, and, and again, it's done on purpose, so we make it stand out in one way or another so that it doesn't look like it was supposed to be part of the leg. It kind of looks like it was added on. In this case as well, I would typically paint that black or something like that just so that it stands out a bit more. But there's all sorts of different things that you can do with that. So uh, have a look around and see what would fit your project the best. Here's one way of treating defects that you might get in boards. Now, very often we get cracks in the ends of boards and we just cut it off. And you can see that there's a nasty crack down here. I wouldn't try and fill that crack. It's just... It just doesn't look good. What a, another way of treating this is we actually take and rip that board. And because this crack, as it turns out, this crack runs way down the board here. Uh, it's another good way of getting rid of some defects. And, and I might even want to preserve this little bit of a feature down here as well. So I wouldn't want to cut that off. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using my Freud glue line rip and I'm going to put details in the article on Woodwork Web. Uh, those of you who are a bit more advanced woodworkers will be interested in learning about that. It will make such a fine cut that I won't even have to joint it after. It'll just come together and you won't even be able to see where that cut is. So let me go ahead and make that cut. Now I'm just holding this board together and in an ideal world that crack would have been completely disappeared but and I could make multiple passes here but you get the point that you could actually cut that off and all I've lost is a, a slob blade kerf instead of this much wood but I want to show you what that blade will do and if you think you know where the cut is look it up here 
up here. Now watch this when I pull it apart. That's how fine a cut you can get with that board. I'll move it up closer here so you can see. So you think you can see the cut up there? Do you remember where it was? <laughs> That's what that blade could do for you. So check that out in the article on Woodwork Web. Now, the second part of this is this part. From time to time, you may buy lumber. And in this case, it's a live edge piece of spalted alder. It's live edge on both sides, but this side is really not very good. It really needs to be cut off. But what do you do with a board that's five inches long and six feet tall. It's pretty hard to find something to do with that. And especially when one part of it is needs to be cut off, it's not going to be good. But look, here's the, the reason that this is an alternative is if you have a board like this, and you can usually buy these a little bit cheaper because people look at them and go, well, it's one single board, five inches wide, you know, what are you going to do with it? Well, as it turns out, there's a lot of things you can do with it. If you cut this and make a nice straight edge, and that's very simple to do, you will end up with two boards, if I can figure out how these go together here, um, something like that. So you end up with a board that, of course, is five inches wide, but you can take that board and cut it in the middle. You can take this board, clean up the two edges, this edge like this, then cut it in the middle and go like this and look at you get you end up with a, a board in this case now that's 10 inches wide and maybe a couple of feet long uh, of all spalted alder and you could use that for a coffee table, a top of a sofa table, uh, end tables, bedside tables, all sorts of things that you could do with that. So that's another alternative that this board you could have done the same thing with is cut that off and fold that down and now you've got live edge on both sides and something more that you can do with and lots more options. Well that concludes my video for today and that's just some of the things that we can do to fix little flaws in wood or maybe even little woodworking mistakes uh, and not have to worry about them because there's all sorts of ways that we can fix them. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.